I want to start this by saying I'm making it because I need to hear it as much as I want you to hear it. Why bother with all the evil in the world? Why should I be good? Why do I need to stay on this path that is difficult at times? Why, when so many people are just out for themselves, should I choose to be virtuous? And really, ultimately, I don't have an answer, but I think it's worth exploring because what is the alternative? What happens if we all just choose the other side of that bargain? I think very quickly we end in self-destruction. If we go back and just bear with me here, this is a, an old story, the oldest story, and it happens to come from the Bible, and that might turn some of you off. I'm certainly not a Christian, but I do think there is wisdom and knowledge to be gained from these ancient myths. And the Bible is one of the oldest, one of the most useful because it takes so many different civilizations, so many different myths and packs it into one. So in the beginning, in the Genesis story, there was just chaos. There was this raw material. There was what the alchemist would call the prima materia, that this thing from which everything can be made. And God's role, which God I see as tradition, the past, the ancestors, the things that we have learned and we needed to project out into something else so that we didn't think that we were the perfect beings because that leads us down a path that we probably don't want to go down. But God spoke the world into order one day at a time. And after he was done, he created man and woman and that represents the physicality of who we are and the logos that pass, passes through our physicality. Logos being a Greek term for consciousness, but it's more than that. It's, it's an interaction with the world and through that interaction, a creation and a sharing with other people. And once we were created, there was the tree of knowledge and the tree of good and evil. And we weren't supposed to eat the fruit and we did. Uh, and in that moment, we became self-aware. And along with self-awareness comes an awareness of our limitation, comes an awareness of death. And that's why God came to us and said, well, now you've done it. Now you know what you are here to go through. You know that you are limited. And that limitation drives suffering. And simultaneously, in that moment of self-awareness, we became aware of evil because if I am self-aware, I know that I can be hurt. And if I know that I can be hurt, I know that I can hurt you and I know how to hurt you. And so the question that I can't get out of my head is if there is a perfect God, a perfect being, why in the hell did he allow evil to be? And what I've come down to is two things. Number one is that I'm not positive that God created evil. Uh, he certainly created the potential for evil, but I think giving us free will is ultimately how we walk down that path. So that's one arm. But the other and much more important or, or much worth more worth focusing on, I think, is that he created something that was not complete. And as he created the animals and the plants, one of the last things that he says is that I gave Adam and Eve dominion over those things, and that was very good. And it's almost like he's saying that it is our path to further those things, to further ourselves, to further this creation along so that we can get back to this place of unity, get back to the place before we ate of the tree. But because society has lost our wisdom traditions, we've lost our rites of passage, we've lost our connection to history, and we need history. 
We are on this planet for such a short period of time. There's no way that we could possibly figure out everything we need to know while we're here. And that's why it's so important that we have mothers and fathers. And it's so important that we have traditions that pass down this knowledge to us. But we've lost all of that. And we've tried to just tweak these ancient things that we've distilled down <laughs> to brilliance. But we don't think it applies to us anymore. And so we're trying to find our own way. And what we're doing is just in this wheel, doing the same things over and over again because we don't have that wisdom and knowledge passed down. Suffering is built into this system that we're in. There's no doubt about it. But I think that it is here as a means to further the system. If things were just perfect and you were great and you had everything that you needed all the time, I don't think that we would do anything to change. I don't think that we would grow. I don't think that, that we could ever complete the plan of bringing things back to union. Not to mention you'd get bored in a week. You know, you look at people that are, are stuck in retirement that don't want to be there and they go crazy. You look at people that are in solitary confinement, they'll just start cutting themselves so that they have a, a source of entertainment. And I don't, I don't tell you that suffering is here to discourage you or to discourage me, but it's here. And so we need to use it because what's the alternative? That we choose to just be evil, that we choose to do whatever is best for us, screw everything and everyone else. Because if that's the direction we go, destruction is not far away. And so we have to bother because it's our, our duty. We have to bother because there's something about caring that gives us an opportunity to connect to this thing that is greater than ourselves and to pull down into the world its desires and its knowing and its dream. And if enough of us can do that over a long enough period of time, I'm not sure what's possible.